Having a basic understanding of the fundamental aspects behind nerve fibre types is vital when describing cranial nerves and appreciating the innovation of different structures of the body. If I were to describe terms such as special somatic afferent fibres or even special visceral afferent fibres, are you confident in describing what these mean in relation to a nerve's function? And are you able to describe, for example, the differences between general visceral efferents and general somatic efferents? As a medical student, learning the modality of each nerve's fibre type can seem totally overwhelming and difficult at times, but it's important you grasp these concepts now before you study the 12 cranial nerves in depth. In this session, we'll be covering the basics of nerve fibre types in relation to cranial nerves. We'll then apply our knowledge to a few examples at the end. My name's Aisha and welcome to Anatomy 101. Before we go through the various nerve fibre types, let's briefly describe the 12 cranial nerves in relation to the brainstem. We'll cover this in greater detail in the next tutorial where we'll take a deeper look into the location at which each cranial nerve arises from the brainstem. The first and second cranial nerves are the olfactory and optic nerves. These do not originate from the brainstem. The third cranial nerve is the oculomotor nerve and the fourth cranial nerve corresponds to the trochlear nerve. These two nerves come off the brainstem at the midbrain. The fifth cranial nerve is the trigeminal nerve, which comes off the pons and is divided into three main branches. The sixth, seventh and eighth cranial nerves correspond to the abducens, facial and vestibular cochlear nerves, which come off at the pontomedullary junction of the brainstem. The ninth cranial nerve corresponds to the glossopharyngeal nerve, and the 10th cranial nerve corresponds to the vagus nerve. The 11th cranial nerve is the accessory nerve, which has both cranial and spinal components. Last but not least, the 12th cranial nerve is the hypoglossal nerve, and also comes off at the medulla. Right, let's move on to the nerve fibre types. As you study each nerve in turn, you'll find that some cranial nerves have purely a sensory function, others have a motor function, and some have both sensory and motor functions. Firstly, nerves can be described as being either afferent or efferent fibres. Afferents are simply sensory nerves which send information from the periphery to the brain, and efferents are motor nerves which send information from the brain to the periphery. Each of these nerves can be described as being general or special. Special nerve fibres are involved with special senses such as hearing, taste and balance, and general nerve fibres describe information to and from everywhere else. It's also worth remembering that general afferents or efferents are also linked to the autonomic nervous system and are classified as non-voluntary. If we consider the afferent sensory fibres first, a general afferent fibre would be involved with sending general sensory information like temperature and pain to the brain, whereas special afferent fibres would be involved with things like vision as it's related to our special senses. General and special afferents can be further categorised into somatic or visceral fibres. Somatic simply refers to nerves involving sensation of the skin, and visceral afferent fibres refer to nerves involved with internal organs or glands. From this classification, we can have general somatic afferents, which detect general sensation from the skin, such as fine and crude touch, pain and temperature, general visceral afferents, which detect general sensation from viscera, such as glands, internal organs and blood vessels. We also have special somatic afferents, which mediate our special senses, such as sensation from the retina during vision, audition during hearing, and equilibrium to facilitate balance. These are generally derived from the ectoderm layer during embryological development. Lastly, special visceral afferents help mediate visceral sensation, such as sensation of the nose and tongue allowing taste and smell. These fibres are often derived from the endoderm layer during embryological development. If we now consider general and special efferent fibres, just like before, these can also be categorised into somatic and visceral efferent nerves. Somatic efferent nerves carry information to the skin or skeletal muscle, whereas visceral efferent nerves carry information to internal organs such as smooth muscle, cardiac muscle and glands. As we've mentioned previously, these visceral efferent fibres are linked to the autonomic nervous system. This classification 
gives rise to general somatic efferents, which supply skeletal muscle, extraocular muscles of the eye, and even muscles of the tongue. General visceral efferents supply internal and visceral organs, such as smooth muscle of the gut to allow peristalsis. Special visceral efferent nerve fibers can also be described as branchial efferents, based on their embryological origin. These supply muscles derived from the pharyngeal arches such as muscles of the face, palate, pharynx and larynx. Lastly, it's worth remembering there is no classification for special somatic efferents. To help you remember which cranial nerves have a sensory, motor or mixed function, I like to use the following mnemonic which describes each cranial nerve's fibre type in numerical order. Some say marry money, but my brother says big brains matter more. Three cranial nerves are purely sensory, five cranial nerves are purely motor, and the remaining four cranial nerves have both a sensory and motor function. Now let's apply our newfound knowledge to some examples. The olfactory nerve facilitates our sense of smell and is purely sensory. It can also be described as being a special visceral afferent nerve fibre. Special because it's involved with our sense of smell, which is one of our special senses. Visceral because it provides sensory information of internal organs and viscera. And afferent because it's a sensory nerve and sends olfactory information to the brain. If we consider the optic nerve, this too is a purely sensory nerve but is instead described as a special somatic afferent nerve fibre. Special because it's involved with our sense of vision, somatic because it facilitates special senses derived from the ectoderm and is not involved in supplying sensory information to internal organs, and afferent because it's a sensory nerve sending information detected at the retina to the brain. Our last example is the fourth cranial nerve, the trochlear nerve. This nerve is involved in supplying the superior oblique muscle, which causes depression, abduction and medial rotation of the eyeball. As this is involved in supplying skeletal muscle, this can be described as being a general somatic efferent. General, as it does not involve the special senses. Somatic, as it supplies motor innervation to skeletal muscle, in this case one of the extraocular muscles of the eye, and efferent, as it's a motor fibre causing contraction of a muscle due to information being passed from the brain to the target muscle. And there we go, now we've covered the fundamental principles behind nerve fibre types in relation to cranial nerves, we're now ready to start studying the cranial nerves in depth. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please remember to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below with what you'd like to see us cover next. Thank you for listening and have a great day.